the 10 biggest deal-making real estate business mistakes I've made so you don't have to make them. So every real estate investor, I believe, business person has made this mistake, offering too much too soon. And what will it or did it cost you? You'll probably never know, but I found out once. So there was a property in Nashville, and it's just numbers, you know, for an example. So whether it's 180,000 or 1.8 million or 18 million, it's the same, just numbers as a real estate investor. So if you hear a low number, it was Nashville real estate, you know, many, many years ago. Anyway, there was a, a property that was in foreclosure and uh, it was worth about uh, $200,000. It really needed no repairs. The, the people had left it in good shape and the bank was foreclosing on it. And there was like a $90,000 loan on it, right? And so the people that were selling to it was a wholesaler and he said, uh, give me um, $120,000 and it's yours. And I'm like, wow, if I bought for $120,000 plus cost, you gotta know your local cost and sell for about 200, needed no repairs to speak of, I could make like 50, 60 grand, correct? So he said, give me 120. And uh, I said, great, uh, I'll offer you 120. He said, sold, signed the contract, we closed and I made some money, I'm not complaining. I later saw him a few weeks later, and we became pretty good friends, did more business together. And he said, Robert, how come you didn't ask me what I'd actually take for the property? I said, well, I did, you said 120. He said, yeah, but you didn't negotiate. You just kind of offered, took my first uh, number. And I said, I would have sold it for 108. I went like, what? Now at that time, 12 grand was a lot of money to me. Maybe it's a lot of money to you. And I'm like, he's like, Robert, you gotta not offer, just ask. Can he do any better? What's the least you'll take? And my mentor had taught me to ask that stuff, but once again, I didn't follow the system. So when you offer on a property, they accept it, what does that mean? You offered too much. Now I know what you're thinking. There are some markets that are super hot where the properties go above market. Of course, you have to know your local market conditions, your local micro market conditions. And if you're in a competitive bidding, you can bid above, get the property. But I deal and I teach my students to deal with highly motivated sellers. And the questions that will make you the most money and save the most are, well, we want $2 million for this property. Well, why are you selling? Why are you selling? Why are you really selling? What happens if you don't sell it? That's my favorite motivational question. Oh, we'll just wait five years and put it back on the market. They're not motivated. And the next question is, what's the least you'll take and be okay? Can you do any better? Can you do any better? Can you do any better? What's the least you'll take and be okay? We don't make offers, we ask. We don't make offers, we ask. If you offer and they accept, how much more could you have saved? You may never know, but I did. So don't make that mistake. Ask, don't offer.